Hey, welcome to Restoration. I'm Rabbi Matt. So glad that you could join us on this online Shabbat. Though we can't be together in person, uh, we're so glad that we can connect with you and you connect with us through the Restoration app, YouTube, Facebook, and IGTV. However you connect with us, we're just glad to be able to share in this Shabbat together. We're supported by tithes and offerings, and you can give on the Restoration app or shalomseal.com. Uh, and if you're visiting with us, meaning you're watching from wherever you are and not uh, actually a part of our community here in Seattle, we're so grateful for you and glad that we could inspire you. And if you'd like to give, you're certainly welcome to. And we're, we're grateful to uh, all of you who are not here in Seattle and from other parts of the world that have given during this season. We just want to say thank you um, because uh, our congregation is, is doing well. Um, and we also have a Helping Others Fund that you can find in the Restoration app and on shalomseal.com. Uh, and that fund has been growing because people have been giving into it, and we are able to help all kinds of people in our community in all kinds of ways um, during this season, as we know so many people need help in this season. We're going to throw it back this week to uh, way back when, uh, to the beginning of this pandemic, and have Shauna uh, lead us through a few songs. And then we're going to come back from worship with a message from our associate rabbi, uh, Ibarz Uchkun, and, and today he's talking about uh, a never disappointing hope, and, and it's a hope that every one of us need, uh, but for those of you who are struggling to find hope in this season, this message is for you, and we want to encourage you to share it on social media, to share it from the Restoration app with other people uh, who are struggling to find hope, because we are confident that in Yeshua, our Messiah, there is a never disappointing hope. Lord of eternity, mystery behind the veil, Oh, no. 
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for joining us at Restoration today. We're so glad you can all tune in and join us for a great message by Rabbi Matt and uh, some worship and praise music. I just want to encourage you to stand up wherever you are, clap your hands, and just meditate on the words and God's glory and his goodness. Amen. singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed your life in me you have been so so your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Now 
couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you gave yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for being so awesome to us, Father. We just thank you for your example of what love really is. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, everybody. I haven't been here in quite a while, but uh, I'm glad to be back. The title of today's sermon is Never Disappointing Hope. And I just want to open by asking uh, a very simple question. Have you ever put your hope in someone or something and that someone or something let you down. Let me rephrase it this way. What are some of the things that have happened this year that have caused you to lose hope? Um, you know, I'm the associate rabbi here at Restoration, and we deal with a lot of um, people calling us during this time period, and I, I, I am seeing a massive loss of hope in people's marriages, uh, in the government, in the political systems around us. People are frustrated with the way uh, medicine is being treated these days, uh, especially, you know, the, the anti-maskers and the maskers and, and, the, and the virus is a hoax people. Um, there's just so much controversy going on that people can't seem to find a place where they can say, okay, this is a direction that we need to go in. Uh, we're still wondering about the education system, whether or not our children will be allowed to go back to school or not, uh, whether or not that's even safe. Um, and, you know, relationships because we're all in homes together, um, are under stress. You know, people who had, uh, you know, peaceable family lives are, are now together 24-7, and they're fighting uh, about silly things like, you know, who, who, who left the refrigerator door open. Um, I just want to kind of put it all in context for you. COVID-19 in the United States has, caught, has caused 160,000 deaths. There are 11% of our population is unemployed. 55% of the small businesses on Yelp, not the restaurants, the small businesses have closed. They're shuttered forever. Suicides are up. Uh, we witnessed police brutality with the, with the death of George Floyd um, and, uh, you know, riots everywhere and civil unrest and, and people... Um, smearing the police. Uh, so instead of being hopeful, we can find ourselves being hopeless. Leadership pioneer Warren G. Bennis wrote that the opposite of hope is despair. And when we despair, it is because we feel there are no choices. Listen, despair is real. I suffer from clinical depression. Um, depression and despair go hand in hand. Uh, when you are in despair, you become desperate. And desperate people make unwise choices. And I think this is why you're seeing a lot of people um, make the choices that they are these days. Uh, people are cutting and running from their marriages. They're, they're cutting and running from, from situations that uh, are too much for them to bear in the moment, especially in light of this virus. And then, you know, instead of seeking help, they're lashing out at the people who would help them. I want to give you some truth here. We have choices. God wants us to understand that he is able to give us never-ending, never-disappointing hope when all things seem hopeless. God wants to give us the keys to finding real hope in this life by showing us how to deal with adversity and suffering and how actually experiencing suffering during this time can help us to grow into fully devoted followers of Yeshua. Um, Paul is the writer of the New Testament. Um, he wrote much of the New Testament. And uh, if you follow the story of Paul in the book of Acts, it chronicles the Im immense amount of suffering that the man experienced. He ex experienced intense persecution. He was beaten. He was stoned. Uh, he was shipwrecked. He was bitten by snakes. Um, he was locked up more times. And he spent years and years in prison writing uh, prison letters. Um, and what Paul wants to get across to us 
in Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, is the keys to be able to um, reach real hope in your life. So let's just jump into the passage. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. Therefore, having been made righteous by trusting, we have shalom with God through our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Through him, we've also gained access by faith into this grace by which we stand and boast in the hope of God's glory. And not only that, we also boast in suffering, knowing that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance, character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. Listen, I need to quantify some things here before I get into what Paul is saying. First of all, there's a difference between suffering and hardship. Suffering is intense emotional distress or pain, or physical pain. People suffer uh, when they have cancer and they're dying of cancer. They lose a loved one. Um, they, you know, they, they get injured in a car accident. Their business is ruined. There are sufferings, right? Those are sufferings. Um, hardship is trouble, adversity, or oppression. Now, uh, all of us have suffered some kind of hardship. We might not have suffered like Paul suffered or suffered some kind of devastating loss or, or health problem, but all of us have suffered some kind of hardship, um, especially nowadays. The, the, the amount of adversity that we have to face and just even going out to go um, get groceries and just imagine somebody sneezed next to you and the amount of fear that would be <laughs> in you in that moment. Um, my daughter recently uh, came home with a cold um, after visiting a friend. So we were all doing the social distancing and, and, and everything was being done properly. Uh, it was the proper number of people and we let her go um, to that person's house. And she came back with a cold. And, you know, we were scared. We were scared and we had to go get tests. And, uh, you know, it, the rest of our family members got sick. I got a test. Um, I wouldn't put that as suffering, but it was a hardship. It was a trouble. It was something that we had to deal with, an adversity that we had to overcome. And many of you are going through that as well. Uh, the Greek here for suffering is pressure or pressing, like a grape being run through a wine press and being pushed and exploded from inside. Um, either way, God wants us to have hope. Now, in the passage, Paul is showing us the keys to finding real hope in the middle of suffering. So let's just go back and read verse 1 again. Therefore, having been made righteous by trusting, we have shalom with God through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Through him we have gained access by faith into this grace which we stand and boast in the hope of God's glory. What is he actually saying? He's saying we need Yeshua. You and I, we need Yeshua. Listen, if there's anything that's going to come of out, out of our suffering, um, we need Yeshua in the middle of that suffering as a point of orientation, an anchor that we can cling to in the storms of life. We can't experience what hope is without knowing who Yeshua is. Listen, if you don't know who Yeshua is and you've been on the fence, this is the perfect time. There are so many uncertain things going on in the world and God wants to reveal himself to you in a real and tangible way that will give you hope. And, you know, many of us, we, we wait or, or we have doubts or, or maybe, you know, we want to put the decisions off till later. There's no need to put the decision off till later because God wants to make himself known to you now. Now, look, without Yeshua, suffering is just meaningless. And pain without him is folly. Um, I speak from experience because for the many years that I didn't know who Yeshua was, uh, I made a lot of really bad decisions without his wisdom and his love and his guidance in my life. Um, I eventually boxed myself into a corner and felt a lot of uh, intense emotional pain and, you know, consequences of my actions. Um, but there's this one verse that kind of speaks to where I was then. And if you're going through that now, I want to bring it up to you. Let us boldly come. In Hebrews 4.16, it says, let us boldly come before the throne of grace so that we can find mercy and grace in the time of need. He wants to make himself known to you. He's saying, come boldly before me. Come boldly before me means just come in. The door is open. You don't even have to knock. 
And he wants to give you grace and mercy in your time of need. Now, in the rest of the passage, it says, through him we have also gained access by faith into into this grace which we stand and boast in the hope of God's glory. And not only that, we boast in suffering. Let's just stop for a second. Boasting? What do you, why would you boast about suffering? I'm boasting that I, you know, um, I, I'm boasting that I'm sick. I'm boasting that I have a cold. I'm boasting that I'm, I'm going through things that are awful right now. Um, boasting means rejoicing. And rejoicing doesn't mean be happy. It means I know that God will gracefully provide for me when I am undergoing trials. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that you have to, you know, say, okay, uh, in a hyper-spiritual manner, oh, you know, um, I got hit with this $1,000 bill or people are saying bad things about me, so I need to uh, just start rejoicing and be happy. Listen, God doesn't want that. That's, a, that's an abnormal reaction. What he does want you to know is that he is always present. He vows that I will never leave or forsake you in the book of Hebrews. He said in the end of the book of Matthew, I will be with you until the end of the age. All throughout the Torah and the prophets and the New Testament, they testify to the fact that God is nearby to those who call upon his name. He wants to be our God, and he wants us to be his people. And he wants us to rejoice in that. Not, you know, some fake, trumped up, um, you know, manufactured sense of happiness. He wants it to be real. The next key is perseverance. Perseverance is engagement with the expectation of victory. Now, I want to speak to this, you know, a little frankly with you. Um, I'm the first one to throw my hands up in the air when I get frustrated with the situation and say, you know what, this this is awful. I'm going to bail or I don't want to do it, you know. Um, perseverance with the is the engagement with the expectation of victory means it's the opposite of quitting. What we're talking about is grit. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with grit, but, um, you know, just a really basic, I used to work on, you know, desks and tables like this, and there are different kinds of sandpaper, and the little, you know, bumps on the end of the sandpaper are grit, and the more and more um, grit there is on the sandpaper, the more and more it digs into the wood, and you have to keep using different levels of sandpaper to get a finer finish on the wood itself. Um, That's how God works on us. He wants us to have that grit against our circumstances. So in the end, we wind up being like that sandpaper. We wind up filing down our obstacles. We wind up engaging them and knowing that when we have God with us and God on our side and we call upon his name, that we can advance with confidence. Listen, you can't persevere if you give in to resignation. You can't persevere if you're throwing your hands up um, when you hit adversary. Do you press in when you face adversity or do you quit? I mean, it's really that simple of a question. Um, You know, like I said, I struggle with this too and I struggle with this all the time. I want to uh, just act like I'm exasperated. But the thing that God wants us to get get across to us in this time is as we persevere, right? It's not, it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have, it's not useless. It has an end game. And that's where we come into the fourth key. God trusting perseverance develops character. Now, character is spiritual, uh, is integrity, spiritual maturity, and moral wholeness. Uh, Martin Luther King said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. My gosh, are we not in times of challenge and controversy? Are we not in times of challenge and controversy? Things are going to come against you that are going to test the very fiber of who you are, your character. You know, the adversary is going to try and throw the kitchen sink at you to try and get you to buckle and give in and cave on your principles. But the truth of it is God wants to lift you up and sustain you. He wants to work on your character and your integrity in these moments so that he can provide you with a hope that never disappoints. Um, You know, a great gauge for us to see where we are uh, with our character is Psalm 15. Let me read it to you. 
a psalm of David, Adonai, who may dwell in your tent, who may live on your holy mountain, the one who walks with integrity, who does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue, does not wrong his neighbor, and does not disgrace his friend, who despises a vile person in his eyes, but honors those who fear Adonai, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, even when it hurts, even when it hurts, and does not change, who lends his money without uh, charging interest, who takes no bribe against the innocent, the one who does these things will never be shaken. Many of you are feeling shaken right now. Many of you are losing hope. Many of you are having your character questioned. Many of you are having your integrity pushed to the limits of things that you can bear by the circumstances that you're bearing. But I want you to understand that God honors and values integrity. The challenge for us is to continue to grow in, ca in character as we face these challenges. And as we do that, and as we uh, bring God into our everyday choices, the things that we, we uh, the obstacles that we come across, as we turn them over to Him, as we wait upon the Lord to be able to deliver us in these circumstances, the character that we develop will open the door to blessing and hope. See, God rewards good character. He gives us the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. The Holy Spirit is alive and it's active who call upon the name of Yeshua. He will fulfill all of God's promises in your life and mine. Listen, we all quit. We all fall down. I just want to encourage you to not give up. You know, the hard part for many of us is uh, these are daunting times. These are circumstances that, that none of us have ever had to walk through. Um, many of us have lost our businesses. We've lost our jobs. We're, we're undergoing marital problems. Um, you know, it, it, maybe it's just as simple as, oh my gosh, I need my kids to be out of the house and I can't send them anywhere because they're going absolutely crazy. They need a friend and I can't give that to them. I can't do the things that I want to do for my family. You're not alone in this. God is, wants to walk alongside as you as you experience these things. And listen, it's not just like God walking alongside of you. There are people that God wants to put into your life, uh, a community. You know, one of our core values is that you can't do life alone. You can't do life alone. Listen, you might not be able to get together physically with people and spend time with them, um, you know, and have them over to your home, but you can reach out. You can ask for help. You can invite people into your life and say, look, you know, I'm going through this problem. I'm struggling. Uh, you know, you can call us. We love to talk to people about their problems. Well, I love to talk to people about their problems. I want to encourage you to keep going. I want to encourage you to persevere. I want you to remember that as you persevere, God is going to work on your character. And as you unlock godly character in your life, you're going to tap into the hope of God that never disappoints. Listen, like I said earlier, he said he would never leave you or forsake you. He said that he would be with you until the end of the age. All of those promises are true. You know, hope is basically God keeping his promises in your life and showing you that he will continue to keep his problems, his, uh, his promises in your life. At the end of every book of the Torah, um, it says, there's an inscription that says, Hazak, Hazak, Vinit Hazek. That means be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. Now, I just want to pray that over you. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be strong, be strong, and strengthen us. Father, we ask you for your presence in our lives to give us the strength and fortitude to be able to persevere in the middle of our sufferings. Help us, Father, to understand that you are working on our character and help us, Lord, to take hold of that deep-rooted hope that never disappoints. In Yeshua's name, amen. We'll see you next week.